Welcome to this HRD podcast. We are joined this morning by Harriet Brower, founder of Apical. Good morning, Harriet. Hey, good morning, everybody. Often new employees fail at their jobs because of a poor culture fit. How do you successfully complete the initial socialization to help combat this? Um, what I believe is very uh, crucial uh, to um, uh, involve all the relevant uh, stakeholders uh, for new hire success, uh, such as the uh, hiring manager, the, the body, uh, the HR department, the recruiter who has uh, been in touch right from the beginning with uh, the new hire, and also the, uh, the new team that the new hire is joining. Um, we facilitate that by uh, involving uh, every respective stakeholder uh, uh, directly from the beginning uh, to make sure that, uh, especially uh, when they uh, have signed their employment contract, that they really are able to maintain the energy level and that uh, the socialization uh, aspect uh, really takes place uh, uh, way before day one. Research shows that it typically takes eight months for newly hired employees to reach full productivity. Can this timeline be compressed through the onboarding process? Yes, indeed. Uh, The timeline can be uh, uh, compressed uh, extensively. Um, If you look at the fact that uh, we approach onboarding uh, more or less uh, by uh, creating a very consistent employee journey, uh, by also implementing uh, pre-hiring uh, engagement and pre-boarding. Um, what I mean with uh, pre-hiring engagement, that's uh, basically the period that uh, a potential recruit uh, is uh, kind of like exploring the opportunities, job opportunities, uh, looking at uh, the website or career portal of uh, any employer, uh, that we make sure that they already are able to feel the culture, uh, that they are able to get in touch with people already um, yeah, before they uh, even uh, consider to uh, to sign their employment contract. Um, regarding pre-boarding, uh, I would say that has been uh, the big winner also driving our growth in recent years. Uh, basically, is that the period uh, when a new hire is signing the contract towards uh, the first day in the office. And in some uh, markets uh, or verticals, um, that can take up to uh, a month or two months um, before they actually join the company. And we use that period so that the new hire can uh, learn already uh, uh, the crucial aspects uh, about uh, the company. Uh, So what's the strategy like? um, what are the key events? Uh, does the product look like, or the services that uh, the new hire is going to uh, to encounter and, and, and or eventually sell? Um, so we provide them with uh, any uh, type of content already to be prepared, uh, and that uh, allows us um, to compress uh, the time to productivity uh, timelines uh, extensively. Um, if you look at the situation uh, after uh, the first day in the office, we provide the new hire also with uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, assignments uh, re- related to uh, social integration, uh, for instance, to, uh, to have a cup of coffee with the hiring manager, uh, but also with assignments to complete certain missions about uh, at the market, about the company, uh, and, and that's what they basically are doing in their own time. So, for instance, when they are uh, in the underground uh, or traveling, um, so, so they get access to bite-sized content and they can, can complete the missions in their own time, basically. And that has been a big uh, catalyst, uh, uh, stimulator to uh, compress the timelines. In most companies, multiple generations are working together. What tips can you offer to ensure companies keep millennials engaged in a diverse working environment? Uh, Yeah, very, very good question. Um, uh, Over the recent years, we have onboarded uh, already uh, 100,000 plus um, uh, millennials. Um, If you look at the fact that uh, especially... uh, Generation Y and Generation Z and Generation Z are the new hires born between 1996 and 2020. Uh, Generation Y, the folks actually in my uh, age category, uh, born between 1981 and 1995. 
uh, we're seeing that at least 60 to 70 percent of the workforce in 2020 will be, um, I would say, indicated as uh, as millennial. If you see what they really uh, embrace is that uh, they want to have uh, no bureaucracy at all in the workplace. They want to have freedom at work, and like control and hierarchy uh, are killing for their creativity and. They're not like uh, meeting uh, uh, people uh, because they see it as a serious energy drain. Um, and, and a millennial wants to have direct engagement. Uh, a second aspect is about um, uh, feedback. Uh, millennials really want to have fast and to the point feedback uh, because they want to contribute to a higher purpose. So it's not about annual performance reviews. Uh, a millennial wants to have uh, a one-to-one -one coach um, and uh, also be in touch with, uh, thirdly, uh, the latest uh, technology because they are very uh, tech-savvy, so they really look forward to use uh, the same uh, technology that they already use uh, in their private uh, lives. So it has to be entry-centric, it has to be very smooth, it has to be mobile. Um, uh, fourthly, uh, what I believe is that they have a very uh, clear eye for old cultures, so they see a lot of existing patterns um, and are clearly spotting what needs to change in the in the culture. And if you look at the fact that uh, from the uh, older generations, I would say the, the the generation after the baby boom generation, um, who are actually the parents of millennial kids. Um, uh, and those parents are really, you know, uh, approaching things from uh, a meeting culture, bureaucracy, uh, annual performance reviews. That's the way how they have been raised in the workplace. Is that you're now seeing that uh, if they are looking at the fact, like, hey, my, my uh, this is the way how I communicate already with my kids, and if they apply it to the workplace. Uh, then you see that those two generations uh, can actually come uh, come together and uh, make sure uh, they are able to uh, uh, successfully work together alongside uh, within any company. Thank you. How can leaders help new employees overcome the challenges of entering a new organization? What I believe is very important um, uh, here uh, is, is the, the, the social integration aspect. Uh, if you look at the involvement of, of leaders, is that uh, I would say over 60% of the new hires uh, leaving any company um, uh, that you see that uh, the main reason is that leaders um, um, uh, enter into a frustrating relationship with, uh, with the new hire. And the new hire provides a feedback like, yeah, the, the, the manager has not been visible enough. Uh, uh, I wasn't able to provide my feedback or receive any feedback. So this, this frustration relationship is something uh, we, we really see as an opportunity to involve senior management um, as well uh, in the, the, the pre-boarding phase. Um, what we're seeing that senior managers uh, who are successful can uh, increasingly uh, um, reach out to a new hire before they join by inviting them to uh, social events, uh, so after office drinks or uh, joining them, uh, let them join uh, crucial uh, internal meetings um, yeah, so that they're ready to get in touch with, with the team. Um, and that they are more or less fulfilling the role as concierge for, for a new hire to really make sure they, they see the manager as a key beacon in their career. That's why we also believe, uh, and that's what typically the problem is with managers and senior management, that they don't have enough time to, I would say, uh, allocate to make the new hire successful, that we said, okay, let's involve them by also providing them with the key insights in the performance uh, and progress uh, of a new hire and providing, providing them with key tips and tricks on how to uh, close the gap with a new hire and to, to really make sure uh, you have this uh, winning team in place uh, consisting of, uh, of the senior manager who typically acts as a hiring manager but to make sure they, um, the new hires are able to get in touch with them extensively. 
How important is personalization for young employees and how can you use this during the onboarding process? Actually, it's, it's uh, one, uh, one of the most important engagement drivers uh, during the onboarding process. Um, if you look at the content, uh, when we started with Apple six years ago to uh, pioneer uh, in the market domain of onboarding, we saw that uh, the content typically was um, uh, tailored for, I would say, more generic purposes like company strategy, uh, market information, um, cultural information and what we have seen over the recent years that it has improved to also locational content uh, i.e. content uh, on, uh, on, on regarding the office uh, environment, uh, regarding a manufacturing site, airport, uh, so really the work environment uh, specifically that has been uh, further tailored to uh, more functional content like are you a new hire is going to work in sales or in um, product development or in support and lastly and that's where uh, we believe uh, we, we can make the connection with also personalized content is that it's regarding the role of any new hire in a, in a certain company that you really tailor the content for for a certain position and uh, allowing also the new hire to uh, get the right uh, um, uh, dynamics uh, across like hey uh, your role as sales rep uh, is dealing with with those type of customers uh, what you typically see also in larger enterprises that uh, there is a mismatch between uh, the way how a new hire is recruited like uh, you're going to deal with enterprise customers and in fact and that sometimes happens uh, especially within larger enterprises that they are um, uh, dealing with, for instance, SMB type of customers. So the mismatch uh, is a key reason for people to be unhappy. And that's why we said, let's turn it upside down by really, really looking at the fact like, hey, what is the type of position, uh, which team, um, and by providing them with uh, the, the personalized, customized content for, for the specific role. Uh, of course, next to the generic content, locational content, functional content, uh, we provide them uh, with the right impression of the work environment. And secondly, uh, by also making sure that social integration is uh, key for new employee orientation onboarding, we see that um, also the social aspect is, is really important uh, because uh, nothing is more powerful than having a very good uh, qualitative uh, face-to-face session. Thank you very much for joining us today. You're most welcome. Have a nice day. To join Harit, among other HR thought leaders at HRD Summit Europe, or for more information on the programme, please visit hrdsummit.eu.